Earthquakes occur around the world every day. Most of the time they cause no damage and most of the time we don't even detect them ourselves as humans. But there's particular equipment that seismologists use that can detect even the slightest seismic event. The actual piece of equipment is called a seismograph and the visual record that it produces is called a seismogram. So the seismograph is the equipment. It's the machine. And it's got a drum of a paper that rolls around, continuously rolling, and there's a needle that if there's ever so the slight movement of the earth, any vibration, it makes the needle move and it produces a particular trace. Um, so the seismogram is the visual record that is produced of the seismic event. Now, you've probably seen what a seismogram looks like. It kind of looks a bit like this. So when there's no seismic activity, there's just a straight line. But when there's the shaking of the earth, well, it makes the needle move and it makes a trace. So it kind of looks a bit like this. And that might be what an earthquake looks like. Now, seismologists are able to interpret that and determine several things. The location of the epicenter of the earthquake and also the magnitude, how strong the earthquake is. So firstly, we need to just to talk about what these different type of uh, traces mean. When we talk about seismic events, uh, we talk about seismic waves. So the vibrations are in waves. The first wave that gets detected is called the P wave. Now the P stands for primary. So it's the primary wave, it's the first one that travels to the seismic station or anywhere, it's the P wave. The second one is called the S wave. And the S wave you probably guessed is called the secondary wave. And the third one, and the most destructive type of wave is called the surface wave. Now, the reason these are differentiated is because if you imagine here's, so here's the Earth, the curvature of the Earth, okay? And let's say here's the focus of the, um, the seismic event. And of course, shock waves are going to go out in all directions from here. So the S and the P waves actually go through the Earth to the seismic station where they're detected. So this is where we've got our seismograph. So the S and the P waves travel through the Earth's crust. The P and the S waves travel through the Earth's crust. The surface waves, well, they actually travel along the surface. And they're the most destructive waves. So they have the largest part of the trace. All right, so the information is all here that the scientists, the seismologists need to be able to work out the epicenter. They work out the time distance between the arrival of the P wave and the arrival of the S wave. So around about here, they have to look at it manually to be able to work it out. So that's the arrival of the P and that's probably around about the arrival of the S. So this interval here is a time interval and it's called the SP interval. So that's a time in seconds or minutes and they are able to convert that time to a distance and that's the distance to the epicenter. So the information from the SP interval is able to help the seismologist identify the epicenter but if you've only got the trace from one uh, seismogram then that can only tell you that the uh, epicenter can be 
somewhere around a particular circle. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say it was detected in Brisbane and the epicenter was 300 kilometers away from that station. Well, it's anywhere around a circle uh, of 300 kilometers around, away from Brisbane. The epicenter could be anywhere around there. So one seismogram is not enough. So let's say there's information from a station in Sydney as well. And it could be anywhere around there, but of course now that we've got two pieces of information, we've narrowed it down so it could either be at this point here or this point here. So to be able to triangulate, we need to have one more piece of data. So let's say the seismic station was in Alice Springs and it identified it could be anywhere around that circle. You can see that there's actually a point here where we've got triangulation. So the scientists are able to say, well, that's where the epicenter is. So that's how you work out the epicenter. You need to work out the SP interval, convert that to distance, and then have information from three seismograms and where they triangulate, that's the epicenter. There's also another thing that so, uh, seismologists want to know, and that's the magnitude, how strong the earthquake is. So the um, magnitude is linked to amplitude. Amplitude is the distance from the midline that a wave deviates. So it's this distance here. Now, I've particularly done it on the S wave because it's the S wave that the scientists use to calculate magnitude. And they use a nomogram to be able to do that. They need to know how far away from the epicenter the, the seismic station is. And they need to know the amplitude of the S wave. And with those two pieces of information, they're able to work out the magnitude of the earthquake. And they use a particular scale called the Richter scale. So that's the information that seismologists can collect from interpreting seismograms.